Hello, this is Awaken to Truth. I am Michael Smith. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and watch this video. I want to talk to you today uh, about failure is not final. And what I mean by that is one of the biggest things that hinder people from moving forward in their life is that they become stuck in a place of fear because of some type of failure in the past. This failure can take many different shapes. It can take many different forms. Maybe you had a business venture that failed. Maybe you had some type of financial situation that ended up in failure. Maybe it was something in your job life. You failed uh, at a particular job and it didn't go well, didn't you know, turn out the way that you thought. Uh, maybe uh, you had a failed marriage that just didn't work out for whatever reason. And at this point, at this stage, there's nothing you can do about it. It's in the past. Failure is one of the biggest hindrances to us moving forward is we become stuck in a place of fear. And in a more natural sense or less uh, traumatic sense, you know, maybe there have just been areas in your life professionally or, um, you know, financially that you have failed or that you feel like was a failure. But as we begin to internalize the idea of being a failure, we can begin to internalize the emotions that come with that failure. And those emotions are not good emotions because nobody likes to fail. If you gave anybody two choices, would you rather fail or would you rather succeed? Everybody would rather succeed. But making mistakes, or you could even say failing, is oftentimes one of our best teachers. Because when you start over, it doesn't mean that you're starting over completely. You're now starting over with an understanding of some things that you shouldn't do. So there's micro failures and then there's you know larger failures. A micro failure, those little micro failures are the things in life that actually are our best friend. They're not cataclysmic. They're not, um, you know, earth shattering. And we have the opportunity to take those and to learn from them. Then there's the bigger failures. You know, maybe it was failure in a, a relationship with friends or, or a relationship with family, or there's been some type of traumatic event that has left long um, remaining scars in your life. And it has kept you from moving forward, uh, regardless of what it might be. The intention of God in your life, the intention of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life is not to just have you dwell upon the things in the past. I mean, quite simply, if there is something in the past, you cannot change that. If you made a decision a, a year ago or two years ago to take a particular direction, and now you're sitting here today and you say, uh, if I could go back, I wouldn't have taken this direction. Well, guess what? you can't go back. What you can do is look at your situation right now and determine what can I do today? What is within my control today? Now, God is a God that controls all things, but he is not a control freak. He is not a God that micromanages every little aspect of our lives. I believe that he has a plan and he has a purpose for each life. And I think that for every person that serves the Lord, it should be our desire or it should be our intention to fulfill the fullness of that plan and that purpose and not to fall short of that plan and that purpose. But his plan and his purpose, I believe, can be accomplished through many different avenues. It's not that it's just one strict, narrow way. Now, I do believe there are times and there are seasons in your life where there are very pivotal decisions that you have to make. And I believe that if we allow the Lord to guide us in those decisions, then we will make the right decisions. But here's the good news. Even if you have made the wrong decision in one of those big decisions, that doesn't mean that you're on your own. He is still there to help you just because you have a failure in the past. Don't let it determine your present and dictate your future. And the best scripture, the easiest scripture that I know of for this, uh, for this subject is the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians when he simply says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. 
And when he says forgetting those things that are behind, it was uh, some years ago and I was in a church service and I felt like the Holy Spirit kind of opened this up to me that it's not just forgetting the bad things that are behind. It's not always just that. Yes, it's definitely sometimes it is that. But sometimes it's forgetting the good things that were behind. Because sometimes we can romanticize some of the good times in our life and we can make more of them than what they really were. And because we're not that content or happy or uh, satisfied with what's going on in our present, we begin to go back and we kind of live in the past in such a way that we romanticize certain times and seasons in our life and we make them something that are far more than they were. Maybe they were pretty good. Maybe they were great. Maybe they were fantastic. But the truth of the matter is now they're gone. And if you're in a different circumstance and if you're a different season, you have to deal with that, but you don't have to deal with it alone, but you do have to allow God to teach you to let go of the failure and to let go of the fear that comes with failure, not to internalize it and not allow it to define you, but to understand that there is something in store. There is something ahead. You say, well, Michael, you really don't know my situation. You really don't understand exactly how bad it is for me right now. You are sitting there and uh, what you're saying is okay, but you just don't get what it is that I am going through. Well, I don't know if I do or if I don't. But the truth of the matter is, is I have been through seasons and through times in my life where I very much wanted to be anywhere other than the place that I was. If you could have, uh, I could have made anywhere seemingly in my mind seem positive compared to the situation that I was in. But here's the thing. There was nothing I could do to, to make the situation change. There was nothing I could do to change the past or to change certain things that maybe had brought me to that place. All that I could do is look at what was in front of me right now, begin to look to the future and say, God, lead me because I know it's not your will for me to be dissatisfied. I know it's not your will for me to be uh, in this state. I know you have something better for me. And sometimes what he has to do is change us. He doesn't necessarily always change the circumstance. Sometimes he does. Thank God he does. But sometimes he has to change us before he can change the circumstance. Because if we don't allow the things that he desires to do in us, it's not going to do us any good to go to the next phase anyway, because we're not ready for it. We're not prepared for it. But his intention is to prepare us and to keep us. His intention is not for us to stay stuck in some failure in the past. He wants us to arise and to walk in the fullness of his plan and of his purpose, forgetting those things that are behind and pressing towards the mark of the high calling that's in Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you with this today, wherever you are, wherever you are right now, it failure is not final. Maybe it hasn't been the way you wanted. Maybe it hasn't been the way you have seen. Maybe to this point, your dreams have not panned out. But here is what the Bible says. It says, many are the plans within the heart of man, but it is God that weighs the intentions, or it is God that takes those plans and he weighs them and he weighs the motives of our plans. And if we allow him to sift those motives, he can sift out the wrong motives and he can begin to lead us and guide us in the way that's going to be beneficial for us. Because oftentimes failure, at least what we interpret as failure, may be God's protection. Sometimes it's our bad choices. Sometimes it's somebody else's bad choices. But whatever the matter is, Failure is not final. God's plan and purpose for you today is to continue moving forward, is to continue stretching and continue growing. And his plan for you today is to give you hope and a future, not to harm you. His plan for you today is that wherever you are in your life, he has somewhere that he's taking you. But if we sit in the past or if we allow failure to finalize the chapter of our lives or we allow it to be the final chapter, we're never going to get to the place that God has for us. But not only do we have to believe, we then have to begin to 
act. We have to move. And you say, well, there's nothing I can do. Well, sometimes we do have to wait. But as soon as there's something that's placed within your power, as soon as there's something that's placed within your sphere of ability to do, you need to do it. You can't just sit in inactivity and think that things are going to change. You can't just do everything the same and think that you're going to get a different outcome. As soon as there is something that has been placed before you that is within your control, you have to take, you have to act, you have to move move and you have to begin to um, change your outlook, your attitude, and your mentality because God is a God of purpose. He is a God of productivity. He is a God of blessing, and he is a God of keeping. He will keep you and he will bless you, but we have to listen. When he says stop, we have to be willing to stop. When he says go forward, we have to be willing to go forward. We don't want to lag behind or get ahead. We want to stay in the center of his plan for our lives. And when he does, no matter what has happened at some point in your past, that failure is not final. God bless you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this today. I hope it's been encouraging to you. I hope it has been some measure of strength to you. And I'll be back with another episode 